Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Don Stephanie. I'm the channel manager at VoIP Supply. I super appreciate you all joining us today. We've got a, a very full list of registrants. I'm super excited about it. Um, I, I know the topic here when we talk about pots in the industry we're in is something we, we don't hear a ton of every day, but uh, this is a topic that I've been thinking about talking to folks about in the industry for well over the last couple of years and the migration away from copper lines. So this is a really exciting topic and I think that our partner Sangoma will have Tim Lin, the product manager who will be doing a lot of the talking today and presentation and uh, Leo D'Alessandro and he is the marketing manager at Sangoma. These folks are gonna work together um, with us to talk about this whole migration. Uh, as you know, as a partner of Web Supply, that uh, Sangoma is a big, uh, a key part of what we offer on our hardware day to day. And of course the services as well. And we'll talk about that along the way. So I'm gonna slow roll into this because as you know, for these webinars, folks join into them slowly. Um, so we're gonna give folks time to sign in, be online and hear the, the meat and potatoes of all this. I said meat and potatoes on St. Patrick's Day, so that is corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes. Um, let me talk real quick about, sorry, dad jokes, we, we do those too. Um, Sangoma, company overview is part of the agenda, so we'll listen to Tim talk about Sangoma. We'll talk about POTS. We'll talk about the FCC mandate that's come along that makes this a real thing and how important it's gonna be for your business and migrating your business and your end clients in, into the new world here. And we'll talk about how Sango, Sangoma can help you with the replacement options. And of course at Web Supply, we carry all those options for you and we can help you get into that. So during the course of the webinar, please use the Q&A feature. Uh, there's a, you can see the little Q in the bubble down there in the corner of your screen and we'll answer your questions at the end of the presentation. We might interrupt here and there if we can kind of, if it makes sense at the time to, to answer those questions along the way. But if we don't, and we, even if we don't answer them during the course of the webinar or at the end because I didn't catch it or I missed it, you can feel free to reach out to us directly. We'll make sure we get those answers for you 100%, um, whether it's today during the webinar or if I got to follow up with you afterwards directly, happy to do so. So before we get into the presentation itself, I'm gonna talk a little bit about VoIP supply. I'll keep this brief. Um, hopefully uh, you can join me uh, monthly on our reseller webinar if you're, if you're one of the, our partners that is, is selling the product. If you're here to learn more, of course, our team of, of sales folks can help you with the solutions itself for your, for your place of business. Um, but we offer a number of things to, to help our partners um, get through the VoIP industry, get more recurring revenue every month, make sure that we're helping our clients with amazing services every month. And we do that through our rental program, which helps you defray, uh, to make sure we defray the cost of the gear up front so that you can pay over time and make that part of your monthly bill instead of having to, to put a huge cash outlay to, to upgrade your infrastructure. We can do the hardware provisioning and programming so that if you, if you need some help getting that set before it leaves our building, we can make sure that, that we're there to help you along the way. And of course, support afterwards when it arrives. Our marketplace is where we help our reseller community offer the great solutions from Sangoma uh, and, and the great solutions and services from Sangoma to you directly. And of course, um, you're gonna get paid in the industry standard. And uh, we offer the spiffs, the pass-throughs, and this is a great way to build your business. Our fulfillment services really are the focus of the hardware to make sure that those are ready to go before they even hit your building. So the solutions from Sangoma, we can make sure those devices are ready to go before they hit your, hit your building or to your multiple locations for your end users. It makes it a much easier deployment for you. The refresh and reclaim is our ability to take products that you've previously deployed, put them back into use so that you don't have to buy them again. So we can go back in, factory reset everything, disinfect, make sure every part that's there originally is there again before it ships out again. This is a very important uh, process for a lot of our customers these days, especially during the struggles with supply chain. So we're able to help our clients and our clients keep this product on hand, keeping the solutions and their voice solutions rolling along uh, without interruption. And so from here, I'm gonna be quiet about it. Um, I'll, I'll have more information about me at the end of the slide in case you wanna to talk to us about how you get involved in our partner program to deliver these Sangoma solutions. Um, and I'll put that up later on here in the presentation. But for now, I'm gonna pass this over to Tim, who's gonna talk a little bit about Sangoma and, and keep the ball rolling. Thanks, Tom. 
So Sangoma is a leading global communications as a service provider that empowers businesses of all sizes to connect to people and processes that matter. Uh, since 1984, Sangoma has been recognized as a trusted leader in the communications industry and continues to offer a stable global presence, forward fu future forward vision, and a diverse portfolio of solutions. It all works together seamlessly. Uh, we offer products such as unified communications as a service, video meeting as a service, contact center as a service, desktop as a service, and even access control as a service. And only Sangoma provides you this complete solution, all designed and built by us, including cloud services, switch endpoints, uh, connectivity, trunks, and more. Uh, much like the Delta Rhythms Boys song, Dry Bones, your Sangoma headset is connected to your Sangoma phone, which is connected to your Sangoma PBX, which is connected to your Sangoma SIP trunking service, which then is connected to our Sangoma Sealick. These are things owned by and run by Sangoma. It's not like a label thrown uh, on top of somebody else's hardware or a white labeling of another, another service, uh, like a lot of vendors that claim this are. And most importantly, we are equally committed to on-prem and cloud. Uh, cloud service communications have been have come a long way and offer a ton of value between security and redundancy and are especially useful with the number of people working from home right now. However, we know that there are still people out there who prefer on-prem systems, whether it's for a sense of ownership or preferring capital expenditure versus operating expenditure. Uh, we're equally committed to both options and can give you what you need, even if it's a combination between the two. So here's a kind of brief overview of Sangoma today. Uh, 600 staff, which includes our newest acquisition, Star to Star and Sangoma. Uh, there are about 2.5 million seats, commercial, uh, commercially licensed seats between Sangoma and Star to Star. And we're a leading value-based communication solution. Uh, we are stable, profitable, and a growing company. We are, are traded on a couple of stock markets and we're here for the long term. So we have a way back playback here. Um, way back in the year 2010, while most of you were obsessing over Katy Perry's California Girls music video, uh, we at Sangoma were obsessing over telephony cards. Uh, we were a kind of leader in the telephony cards. And then a year later, we got started working on Vega gateways, which were our analog to digital gateways that allow, uh, allow analog phone systems to connect to digital services. And Don, I don't know if you want to go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about that. Sure. And I'm sorry about the little slide dance I just did there because I, I was thinking about it and, uh, and, and, and thinking about the fact that I've been here for 11 years. So a part of the Wayback Machine, um, I was here when a lot of what we did with Sangoma uh, had to do with the do-it-yourself world in, in, in the open, you know, the open SIP space. So those cards um, flew out the door on a daily basis. They still do fly out the door. I quoted one, um, I think two days ago. Um, and it's it's still part of it. So it's definitely part of what people are still deploying. It, it is part of, especially depending on where, where you are globally, and we're a global company. So our solutions are not only here in the States, it's it's all over the world. So um, in some places, you know, the conversion and the use of the analog cards to, to make your PBX reach out uh, to the POTS world is still part of what we're doing. Um, the good part of that is the evolution is, is what we've been doing, right? So um, we start back there at the analog when it was all about POTS and then slowly, um, uh, find a way to do that hybrid solution and gently uh, convert you over to the cloud world into the SIP trunking world over the over the internet um, as long as your infrastructure allows it. So so that's something we've been part of over the last you know 10 plus years. Um, and, and it's super exciting. I, I've had a, a great time doing this and it's funny because so much of what I've learned uh, over my first few years 
years uh, still does come back. Um, but I learn every day. You know, I learn every day in this industry is constantly evolving, and it's super exciting to be, uh, to be working with Sangoma on this because um, the Sangoma solution is very complete. It, it can still do the Wayback Machine, and then as as your as your client or even the place that you that you put your deployment in evolves, um, we could be part of changing that over and transitioning it, it transitioning it over. So, um, so that's very much part of what we do every day. So uh, the experts at VoIP Supply, um, I'm actually kind of a newbie at 11 years, which is amazing. So the experts here can help you with that. So whether it's myself uh, or other folks here on the sales team at VoIP Supply, we work with with Sangoma, um, and and to do in doing that, we can bring the solutions and, and help you evolve as the industry does and as your as your infrastructure does where you are where you're deploying these. And a lot of people are a little bit afraid of VoIP still or the cloud still. So this is a really gentle, gentle way to, to get folks um, in a position where they can move when they're comfortable moving and when they see that their internet is stable and that these solutions are secure and stable. And once you show them how that is, it's already proven, we can help you move along. Great, thanks, Don. All right, so before we go into how POTS is used today and the overall mandate, uh, for those who may not know the term, it stands for Plain Old Telephone System. While that acronym certainly doesn't sound exciting, the te technology has been used since the 1880s as a main form of long distance communication, and it was a huge leap forward at the time. What POTS does is allow analog voice transmission over copper wires, and while this is less common in residential spaces, they're still in use today on a handful of specific business-related applications. Most residential phone services at this point have moved to a voice-based service since the probably about 2010s. Major providers have been working on converting people through various means, and we'll go into those means a little bit later. But a very important aspect to today about what we're talking about is the Telecommunications Act of 1996. Prior to that act, there were several large phone companies that had virtual monopolies on the areas that they serviced. The goal of the act was to essentially allow anybody to enter the telecommunications business and help compete with these larger companies. Among the all, a lot of other, other things, this act required that these LECs to, uh, to bundle and lease their copper lines to competitive local exchange carriers. This allowed companies to provide their service over the copper lines that the ILEC already had installed. So where is this being used then? Well, there are several devices and systems that are still using copper lines to communicate because generally it works better. Uh, fax machines are the more obvious things that come to mind, but things like alarm systems, emergency call boxes, and even fire alarms are using POTS as their backbone. And this is typically because of two different reasons. First, many of these systems were just designed to send a digital signal over an analog line. Translating that signal over and over often leads to artifacts and issues during the translation process. This is often a big part of why faxes have a lower success rate over VoIP. Now for faxing, T38 is available to clean up some of it, but it's not nearly as successful as it once was over these analog lines. The second is something that people might not realize or may have forgotten. Some POTS lines don't require you to provide power to them. It means if power is lost in a building, the phone line is still available for incoming and outgoing calls. That means as long as some of these alarm systems or fire alarms have some sort of battery backup, they would continue to work even in the event of a power outage. Now, you could certainly have a battery backup for your router or DSU or cable modem as well, but even then you're at the mercy of your internet connection, which is sometimes less reliable than the heavily touted five nines that POTS afforded, though it has gotten a lot closer in recent years. So, we talked about a lot of these business related applications, but how many of these could actually still be running off of POTS? Well, some experts estimate that there are 24 million of these specialty POTS lines being used today. And on top of that, there is an estimated 12 million POTS lines that do not fall under these special use cases. It's going to be difficult to replace 36 million POTS lines in the next four and a half months though that's not entirely what needs to be done.
On the flip side, though, Plotz wasn't perfect, and there are certainly good reasons to be moving on from this century-old technology. For one, it's fairly expensive. Now, a lot of the price increases are a little artificial due to the FCC and state regulators removing price caps on POTS lines, but carriers are definitely taking advantage of the removal and significantly increasing rates, even as alternative options like mobile phones are constantly lowering prices due to competition. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that a cost of POTS service has gone up 36% since 2010, putting some POTS lines upward of $80, while VoIP services are sitting around $20 or even lower. I'm sure that a large reason behind the price increases are related to the upkeep of a carrier's copper networks not being worth the significantly fewer users that are actually on it. The price increase may also act as a spark to get customers to move to a VoIP-based service. POTS also doesn't nearly have the amount of monitoring available uh, compared to newer technology, often relying on regular ma maintenance to find issues or things that could be issues or consumer reports. With newer networks, the amount of monitoring available can quickly find issues often before the customers even see them or hear them. Those issues can often include call quality issues due to MOS as well as overall call failures. And then finally, lack of support, which is a huge one. I mentioned the upkeep of the carrier's copper networks. These maintenance technicians are becoming more and more difficult to find due to the increasing, decreasing use of copper lines. This means that the cost for this specialized support and maintenance will continue to rise in addition to less preventative maintenance from happening. This is likely to help lead carriers towards neglecting these networks at some level. So a vast majority of people have moved over to newer alternatives, but as we mentioned, there are 36 million active POTS lines in the U.S. being used by various systems. So what does this deadline mean for those lines? Just shutting down 36 million lines, many of which are used for emergencies, doesn't seem like a good plan. Well, that's not entirely what's happening. We mentioned that the Telecommunications Act of 1996 required ILEX to lease out their copper networks to competitive local exchange carriers. This, the deadline that is coming up in August is for a forbearance on those requirements, meaning ILEX will no longer need to offer those copper analog lines. The FCC has determined that the copper lines are no longer a requirement for providing phone service between newer technologies such as LTE, SIP trunking, and so forth. So this doesn't necessarily mean that all of those lines are going to go dark on August 2nd. However, it doesn't mean that you can expect them to continue to working either. It's a fairly complex scenario which is going to affect different areas differently. So where did this mandate actually come from? In 2017, the FCC let providers know that they were able to start sunsetting their POTS lines, with AT&T and Verizon definitely leading the charge to start decommissioning. A couple years after that, the FCC gave them three years to move these customers over to alternative services, which would be the 2nd of August, 2022. And major carriers are certainly happy to rid themselves of the expensive upkeep required of these pot signs. The idea was, at least to the FCC, that these copper line based requirements were holding the industry back. That removing these requirements is going to somehow finally allow the industry to grow and thrive. And we'll see if that happens. However, where does this leave those smaller providers that were selling service over these lines? Or more importantly, the companies that are unaware of this deadline? Again, I want to be clear that it's still possible that these lines will be provided, but the FCC will no longer be mandating that the carriers lease their copper lines and also will not be artificially controlling the price. That certainly makes it likely that these lines are going to 
cost a lot more or go away altogether. Those businesses are going to need a replacement solution, which is cost effective, seamless, and reliable. It's very much possible that the current provider doesn't have an easy path to transition. With August of this year quickly approaching, there are a lot of people that need to get started now if they're going to make an informed decision that isn't rushed. And that is where you come in and where we can give you the tools needed to provide a great replacement plan. So ideally, replacing the analog, uh, existing analog equipment with IP compatible hardware systems would massively increase the number of features available to the customer, as well as removing the century old copper line technology. One huge gain would be allowing remote employees to easily be part of the phone system. These employees can install a soft phone on their laptop or PC and it would be the same as if they were in the office. Not all companies will have the option to make a large CapEx purchase like this though. They can't replace a dozen of phones, an entire phone system, and have somebody come in and install everything. For those people, there are a couple of different options. First, replacing their on-prem equipment with a cloud PBX like SwitchFox Cloud. This gives the customers all the additional functions that an IP compatible system would have without the need for a large upfront purchase. Instead, they would pay as they go and they would be easily able to add new extensions to the system as they grow. Or maybe the company likes their current phones and phone system and refuse to give it up. That's where Sangoma's Vega gateways come in and can be used to convert an internal POTS network into VoIP and connect it with a VoIP provider. So let's sit down and review these scenarios a little deeper so we know what it looks like. As mentioned, ideally replacing the entire POTS-based PBX would future-proof their system and allow for dozens of features that aren't typically available in those older systems. However, if they're unable or unwilling to do that, Sangoma offers a Vega gateway that will allow them to integrate their old phone system with a SIP trunking service. If the customer is ready to get rid of their old phone system, but are unable or unwilling to make a large upfront purchase of a new on-prem system, that's where Sangoma's SwitchFox Cloud comes in. Shifting, shifting this the expenditure to an operating expense allows for an easier transition. This gives the customer all the features of a new IP-based PBX without the necessary upfront investment. Down the line, it also makes adding new lines very easy and allows for multiple locations to share the same PBX. And finally, uh, we are gonna go over a somewhat fringe scenario but it's something that we want to talk about for those customers that are sensitive to outages. We mentioned one of the pros of POTS being the reliability, especially during power outages. This last scenario offers a backup internet connection in the event of a network outage, and that would allow phone calls to still work. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, though. So why would you go with SIP trunking? Uh, first, the cost is much lower. As we mentioned previously, $80 average POTS line versus $20 for a SIP line. You also have the freedom to add more lines, not only with instant turn up, but you can easily add a precise number of lines that you need. If you need five more channels, add five more channels. In addition, the future proofing is a great aspect. Uh, analog phone lines are unlikely to have much longer shelf life and support maintenance options will start becoming sparse. And then finally, business continuity and contingency. Uh, reroute calls over to failed numbers and or set up backup PBXs in the event of an outage.
So then what about faxing? We had talked about how tough it is to fax over VoIP, and that's where fax station comes into play. You have a choice of connecting an existing fax machine to a piece of hardware or to utilize a faxing portal where you can upload documents and send out faxes from your web browser with both low volume and high volume service available. It works much better at low bandwidth situations or with packet loss because it avoids the T38 related compatibility and network concerns completely. The service is also easily managed from your SIP station portal with a fully rebrandable custom portal option available if you were to resell that service. Then we have uh, a few of the accolades of SIP station. Uh, number one in customer satisfaction, easy setup, reliable. Uh, we offer a fraud guard, which is, uh, allows you to set up metered caps and uh, monitoring and alerts. And uh, most of the things that you need to do with your system uh, or need to do with your account is self-service in our portal. Uh, so just a, a few different uh, features and that you get from SIP station. So how do we deliver SIP station then? Uh, we mentioned a the ability to add a Vega gateway to your legacy analog PBX. Don, do you want to talk a little bit more about that Vega gateway, the FXS ports, and uh, how it connects? Sure, absolutely. What, what's the matter? Are you talking a lot? Need a drink of water or something? I do. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Enjoy that. So, absolutely. So, um, Tim's been doing an amazing job talking about the scenarios and leading up to it. Um, and, and at VoIP Supply, as I talked early on about how we've been here since kind of the beginning of, of VoIP in general and, and kind of the evolution, um, this scenario of SIP station um, is a way to, to work with hardware to, uh, to bridge that, 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 that comfort that we talked about earlier uh, to go from the analog to the cloud. Um, but what the SIP station allows you to do is deliver that cloud service and then preserve that infrastructure, the legacy PBX. So by putting a Vega gateway in between in, in between that, um, we can bridge that gap and it, and it allows that like that cost savings that Tim had been talking about, um, as well as um, the, the, the lack of the need for that copper line at that point. So if you can't rip and replace everything internally, uh, you can still still leverage, leverage that gear and then leverage the advantages that SIP allows you to you know, take advantage of. So, um, you know, the gateways we, we carry, depending on the scenario, so there's a couple different ways that analog might be, it might be delivered, whether it's a PRI where we're putting in a Vega 100, because um, that's what your PBX is accepting, we can do that. Um, and if you have a certain port count where you're working on a, a certain number of incoming lines that are going to be uh, truncated with what's called an F FXS or an FXO port, FXO for the outgoing, FXS for the station inside, um, that allows you to hook those legacy PBXs up without really skipping a beat in terms of of what the folks at the business are using. So there's no new training needed, no, you know, again, no big upgrades internally needed, just that gateway to make that happen. And of course the SIP station services uh, that you could take advantage of at that lower cost. So that's, that's, what, that's what those gateways do. So here's, here's what VoIP Supply can do for you. If you're not sure where you are or, or kind of that, that, you know, where you're headed with that, give us a call. Um, one of our experts can help you hear the scenario, understand what that PBX does now, um, and then kind of decide, you know, the traffic level that you have and decide what, you know, how that solution should look. How many SIP, straight, SIP station trunks do you need? And of course, um, Tim also mentioned a feature that is super important with SIP station is the bursting feature. So even if you, you, you kind of shortchange yourself, um, you, you pick 10 lines and all of a sudden you realize, you know, you have some seasonal traffic and your, and your calls go up through the roof. Um, the nice thing is, you know, SIP station handles that and, and they can burst. So you won't miss any calls. Um, with analog, and, and if you have a set number of lines, well, you're stuck. You get to call number 10 and you only have 10 lines. Well, the 11th call is going to hit busy and, and not go anywhere. So with SIP station, that never happens. So a beautiful benefit without even really changing uh, to a, um, the more feature rich uh, PBX that, that the IP PBX world offers you.
So I, I mentioned that Fax Station also gets around the uh, T38 compatibility issues. And, and I want to kind of explain how that works so that you uh, understand uh, what we're doing here. Uh, I mentioned that there are two different options, sending faxes out through ePortal or the appliance that you install on your, your fax machine. Uh, with the appliance, what happens is your fax machine doesn't fax the document to the end fax machine. It faxes it to our appliance. Once our appliance has that file, it actually transfers via HTTPS to Sangoma's data center. And we have uh, several PRI running into the data center and the Sangoma fax station servers actually send that fax out via PRI. Uh, we also have some SIP, tr uh, SIP trunk failovers there, but that's basically how we're getting around the T38 compatibility issues where uh, we're going to grab the actual file via HTTPS and uh, most of the time we're sending it out through a PRI to the, the end fax machine. So it is definitely uh, given us a very high completion rate on faxes and uh, it, it certainly works better than just a normal T38 call. So the second scenario we talked about was replacing this analog phone system with a cloud PBX, and that, that is SwitchFox Cloud at Sangoma. Uh, SwitchFox Cloud is a, a very powerful unified communications phone system. Uh, it's scalable, flexible. Uh, there's seamless integration with the Sangoma phones, PSTN, uh, collaboration features. It, it's basically a complete cloud-based unified communication system. Uh, it has several, uh, several different features, a phone app that you can use to keep in touch with people. Uh, you can set up various extensions for you. So you can have a uh, desk phone extension and a soft phone extension. And whenever somebody tries calling you, it'll figure out where you are. So uh, it's perfect for contact centers between all of the reporting and analytics. And uh, we do also offer 24 seven support on that. Then the last thing I want to go over is that kind of special scenario that I talked about. This is for, uh, for customers that may be hypersensitive to outages and, and need to make sure that their telephone service works. And I'm going to let uh, Leo go ahead and uh, explain this setup and how we were able to get this working for a uh, fairly large logistics company. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Tim. Um, yeah, so as, as Tim mentioned, this is for uh, like very large infrastructures where there's um, elevator phones, fire panels, you know, things like that all scattered around um, in an environment, geographically separated, um, you know, has internet connection, limited internet connection or none whatsoever. Um, so we have a perfect uh, plug and play solution. So uh, we partnered with, um, with an integrator and with our development team, we managed to combine uh, the Vega gateways with this company's um, LTE routers, which they specialize in. And so we created like a combo box. And so we, you know, you drop ship these at the locations where you have these phones, devices. Um, and, you know, if they have internet connection, but limited, you, you, have, you, you connect the Vega gateway as primary over an internet connection. And then you'll have the LTE as backup or if there's no internet connection, you'll have LTE as primary. And, um, and, um, and so, so we, we were very successful in, in this setup. We actually have quite a few large customers, which, you know, I, I hate when we have to sign uh, NDA agreements because you can't really talk about them. But, um, you know, we, um, you might, we have a big customer that you might use for shipping and receiving. That's, that's all I can say. Um, but uh, this this this, uh, this integrator is actually deploying a lot of these combo um, um, you know scenarios across the country um, in thousands of locations, and um, and yeah, so I've been working very closely with with the integrator. Uh, we have some case studies and and some blogs that we're actually uh, sending out. So um, I think at the end we'll we'll share that with you. 
Great. So that's, you. that's what I, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so this page here, you don't have to take a screenshot or anything or hurry up and, and type in these different uh, URLs. We're going to send out this presentation to everybody who attended and uh, hopefully make a recording of this available or at the very least uh, send out this slideshow so you can kind of come back and view some of this information as, as you needed. So Don, I've been talking a lot. Would you like to tell them what the next steps are? Pretty sure I have to unmute myself first and then I could probably do that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you have been talking a lot. Um, VoIP Supply is here to, to help you sign on as a Sangoma partner. That's the biggest thing. For everything we talked here, all these solutions really involve everything, uh, whether it's the hardware we talked about with the gateways or the services themselves and bridging that gap. So becoming a, a VoIP Supply partner and a Sangoma partner is really it. And reaching out to myself and the team here at VoIP Supply, we can help you get into that. So you really, we really need you to join our team here. And that's not just our team, that's the Sangoma team as well. And uh, that's gonna let you become exclusive in a lot of ways. So um, the exclusive pricing happens because Sangoma's partner pricing is something we pass on to you directly, super easy to set up. When you log in as a partner, instead of just seeing what those prices are online, that partner pricing will be available to you. Um, and of course, opportunity support. So um, as you can tell, the folks here at Sangoma know what's going on with this industry, what the solutions look like, and as we push forward into it. So that expertise is something Something we could tap into it, it's it's fast it's fantastic so you know I've been doing this for 11 years and I learn something new every day um, so that's a, a very important part of uh, a part important thing to remember here as we go through this I I don't know everything um, and I can lean on the folks at Sangoma to get answers um, when I don't have them so um, you know, it's one thing at Adesti, and I came from Broadline before here. The nice thing about web supply is we get to focus on this narrow part of the industry. So we're getting pretty good at, at, at what we do here. And I, and I know a lot more about this than I ever knew in my previous job about the things that we sold because I can focus on it. Um, however, the other neat thing is behind, um, behind us, that Sangoma technology side of things, it's available to us. So all the engineers there that develop the new things within these platforms every day, we can chat with them and help you get the answers that at, at normally at a distributor that we really struggle to get. So that's a beautiful thing. So please reach out to me. Uh, reach out uh, If you're already working with somebody here at Web Supply, reach out to that team member. That, they know all the same stuff and, and, and maybe even more than me. I, like I said, I'm kind of a newbie at 11 years. So reach out to us, join the program, take advantage of these benefits. Um, sell the services, um, sell the hardware, uh, deploy these things in your businesses. If, you're, if you happen to be out here as an end user, please, of course, anyone here on this call can help build this for you as well, and we'll, and we'll keep it rolling along. So I'll leave this up here a second longer so you have my direct info if you want to, but again, you can pick up or hit our site and use the 800 number and be in contact with us very quickly. And we'll set you up, get you set as a reseller and a partner here, and get you on your way to selling these fantastic solutions and migrating your folks away from copper and into, into the, the SIP world and, and hosted services and beyond. And well, this is gonna be a fun part because usually when I get to the end of the th some of these presentations I do, we don't have a ton of, of Q&A. Um, and today we've gotten a number. So, and I know, I know Leo, you've been monitoring this as well. And I, I don't know if you wanna just kind of take them and run with them or if you'd like me to kind of kind of put some of the questions forth for you and, and we can all kind of step in to answer them. Um, but some of this, I think you'll probably know better than I will, so. Yeah, sure. Uh, Tim, I think you can see the questions as well. Um, there's can. some questions about um, HIPAA compliance. Um, I, I, won't, I, don't, I won't step on your toes. I'll let you, uh, you know, answer that if you want, and then I'll follow up. Yeah, great. Thanks, Leo. Yeah, so we had a question about fax station and uh, whether it meets HIPAA requirements for, uh, for health care. Uh, today, we were not able to sign a BAA uh, for HIPAA compliance. So if you do have healthcare, we're not able to sign that business agreement, but, um, and this is somewhat of a spoiler, uh, we are working on that. So um, we actively have engaged a consultant and we're working on trying to become HIPAA compliant. And uh, we'll go ahead and make sure we have your contact information and reach out whenever that is a possibility. Perfect. 
How about the um, the 911 question we have there from uh, from a, cus a customer there or partner? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So that was a um, can each FXS port have a unique 911 address? So that that ultimately. Uh, I believe goes back to whether or not each port can have uh, basically assigned a um, a different 911 uh, 911 caller ID, and I'm not entirely sure about that. Most most instances, I would think that an analog phone system would be handling what I what. Uh, caller ID to send, but Don, do you know if you can uh, kind of in the Vega gateway set up different uh, 911 caller IDs for each of those ports? I'm trying to remember which point we sent that. So within the gateways themselves, those um, those call those dial plans are there, but I'm not sure how we associate within within that the actual 911 address. And I'm thinking that's both I think the question there, Brad, might be that it's both not just the fact that it has the 911 um, that capability, but where where that response is. And I think that's something that we deal with. I'm not sure which portion of the service that's done with, but we'll get back to you on that. I'll, that's a question I usually let the folks that are setting up the system deal with, and so I don't know that off the top of my head, but absolutely, we'll get you that answer. An alternative for this question might be if the uh, the system inherently supports PID flow. Uh, which I, I don't think is the case, but uh, maybe you know, Don. So I think I think someone mentioned that uh, the way the SIP trunks are assigned, that has the information for those addresses. I believe that's absolutely what's going on there. Very good, um, Tim. So there's a question about if this is affecting DSL internet, uh, most specifically in rural areas. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. So there, there's a couple questions um, surrounding rural residential areas. And, and I, um, especially with Frontier and CenturyLink, that's yeah. a great question. It, it really is. Um, I, I'm not sure how that's going to be handled. Uh, there are definitely going to be areas where this is kind of the only option. So I would think, hopefully, um, that those providers would continue to offer that service just because they don't have an alternative. Um, but okay. I, I'm not sure what that's going to look like because, uh, you know, if um, if those companies were truly evil, they could only have uh, that service there and then jack up the prices because there's no uh, no limits on it anymore. But I, I'm not sure exactly how those um, those areas are going to handle that. I, I would assume that DSL lines would be okay. Uh, what should be happening in this case, and it's happening with AT&T and Verizon, is uh, the carriers should have already reached out to those end users and told them, hey, the service that you're purchasing from us is going away on this date. And, and AT&T and Verizon <laughs> specifically are being uh, extremely uh, aggressive with that date. I believe it's the end of April uh, for Verizon and, and somewhere close to that for, for April. So those, those customers should have received uh, a, some sort of acknowledgement and uh, instructions on how to move forward. Uh, but I, I would assume that if they haven't received that, they're either on a technology that is fine, that is going to stick around, um, or that they are just going to stay on uh, on copper pots lines for now. Yeah, and on that frontier century link, um, how it's being handled, um, I'm trying to figure out what I can and cannot say. Um, don't want to get in trouble, <laughs> but the uh, large infrastructure uh, slide that I was talking to, um, that integrator is actually working with them. So um, that's how they're handling it. <laughs> in my, that's what I think. All right, um, any other questions? I think uh, right after that question about the DSL was some stuff specific to fax station, um, whether or not fax station supports color fax. Um, 
That's one question. And then uh, receiving fax to your email and fax machine simultaneously. So two quick questions about fax station right in there. Oh, yeah. Missed. Yeah, great. So uh, yes, fax station does support color fax. And you can also set up a DID that you have for inbound faxes to go to uh, both the device and the portal. Uh, so what will happen is you'll receive the fax on the portal at first, and then it queues up to be sent to the device. So you will receive it in both sides, even if you don't set it up that way, you can go into the portal to view all of your previous faxes that you've received. Um, in addition to that, there is a, uh, if I'm using fax station, can I add port number two as a standard phone line uh, just by adding a line uh, in the fax station device for an alarm? So the fax station device is currently designed to just accept fax calls to it and then uh, upload that file to uh, to our, our servers. So it wouldn't you wouldn't be able to add that into it because it's expecting to receive a fax, unfortunately. And then um, a, a quick note from Brian about uh, getting more information about the solution for you know individual use cases such as your your elevator, which I'm sure has an analog connection. So yeah, absolutely, you can reach out to me afterwards uh, or pick up the phone and call 800 number. We can help you get the right solution for that for sure. So anything like that that's specific solution wise, uh, feel free to reach out to us so we can address it with you. You know, kind of want to understand what we're working on, what what your infrastructure, what services you got going on, and we can work on that for you. I like DAX station. We should invent that. Um, so Perry asked Ooh, a question great. about whether fax station, <laughs> uh, can I add port number two as a standard phone line just by adding a line that console to the fax station device for an alarm? And yeah, I don't, that, but yeah, go um, ahead. yeah, the, the DAX station just is a picture of DAX Shepherd. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did, uh, did answer that. It is expecting specifically faxes, so it wouldn't work as a um, kind of a voice or, um, or replacement for anything except uh, the fax. There you go. Absolutely. I think that's most of the questions that we've had so far, for sure. Um, and I know I had a question earlier today about this because of the, the concept in general uh, about cloud versus prem um, and some of the migrations. So um, basically setting up an on-prem and then kind of migrating into the cloud is something I think is a strategy that um, as a reseller or as a business you want to think about. Um, so if you're comfortable and your services are, are all copper right now, um, a, a good way to address it if, you, if you're using a Sangoma solution is with that, with the, with the, the Switchbox product um, as, as the, the cloud service there is, is the predominant thing I talk about for cloud services from Sangoma. Um, you can have that on-prem system and you can do the migration of your current platform pretty seamlessly into the cloud and, and that's something to take advantage of we can help you through that so if you if you need to put a, a, a system in now and you're or you already have a switch box system moving to the cloud is very simple so please do reach out to me about that um, we can help you do that i think it's a it's a beautiful example of how you migrate from that old to the to the to the new and, and that that evolution so depending on your situation and how soon uh, you see your area i mean if you're if you're your your pos provider is saying, yeah, we, we definitely are stopping the support or you see that pricing creeping up, definitely uh, something to consider and how we can help, how we can help you with that. So there's, if there's anything else, please I'm gonna give here just a moment longer as we, as we, as we're going through this. And then I'm going to say that I think I should say thank you to, uh, to our friends from Sangoma and thank you for all um, who joined us here. So yeah, it looks like, Don, huh? we did get another yep. question. Um, are we working on a built-in broadband modem? I, I assume that you mean uh, in the actual VoIP gateway, building in a broadband uh, modem into it. Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, any plans for that. Are, are you, do you know it all, Don? I have not seen that um, anywhere in the product schedule or announcement, so um, I don't think that's going to be a thing.
but that doesn't mean the solutions that we're offering, let me let me just pause there for a second, it doesn't mean the solution we're offering, we can't help you still make that transition even though it's not built right in. Um, in fact, that would kind of be a stale piece of hardware at some point, um, you know, so we would have to, so I think what we do there is you're basically gonna, we're gonna bridge that gap with the gear and, and you're not gonna really have to worry about that internally. Oh, and, and he mentioned uh, cell, specifically cellular, and I think that that kind of falls into the, uh, the scenario three that we went over uh, with an LT connection for, for, in that particular case, it was a backup, but I, I, can't, I can't see it being impossible to use that as a primary connection. So, yeah, we could probably uh, do oh, something similar. LT absolutely it can be a primary if that's that's where we were talking about that earlier uh, geography wise there's certain places where there just isn't a good infrastructure um, at all and LT is the best way to go so um, and I remember even when we moved into this building uh, many years ago when I first started um, that we actually used LT here for for a backup because getting the building up and running and getting the getting the uh, fiber to the building everything was taking time and we just had a kind of a cutover date and we we hit it and we we used the LT as as part of our solution um, until we got everything fully up and running within the building. So there's a lot of scenarios to use that actually besides just the backup. So again, kind of slow playing here as we end, and I think uh, we're going to wrap it up here. I mean, if there's anything else that, that comes up, um, if you think of it after this, after we end the webinar here today, uh, please reach out directly. We'll get those answers for you. Super looking forward to anybody who's not signed up as a partner. Reach out. Let's get you signed up. Let's get you selling these solutions. And, and thank you all so much for joining us. What a wonderful turnout. Super excited to, to drive forward with, with this, and I'm looking forward to talking to you in the near future. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the slides will go out uh, first thing tomorrow morning and then we'll have the recording uh, following. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tim. Thank you, Leo. Thank you, guys. Great. Thanks, everyone.